Hey guys, welcome to our channel. We're back again with another exciting video for you. Pokemon Go's fundamentals are straightforward and enjoyable. You walk, you catch Pokemon, you collect as many as you can, and you stop at Pokestop to fill your backpacks with items that will aid your trainer on their journey. But there's a lot more to consider when it comes to mastering the game. But here are some helpful tricks and tips for becoming a Pokemon master. But before we get into it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. That said, now let's get started. Number 13. Hatch your eggs and make good use of your incubators. Once you have placed them through an incubator and travel the required distance 2km, 5km, 7km, or 10km, the eggs you gathered at Pokestops or received as gifts can help you get some Pokemon, gain XP, and boost candies. Everyone starts with an endless use incubator, but you'll occasionally be rewarded with 3x incubators, which you may also purchase in the shop. You'll be able to make better use of those incubators if you utilize this method. Keep an eye out for exceptional occurrences that reduce hatching distances. In general, the farther away the eggs are, the better the benefits. Number 12. First, get XP, then upgrade your Pokemon. Your trainer's skills is determined by the amount of XP you have. As you progress through the levels of XP, you will require more XP to level up. However, as you go, the prices increase, and you'll be able to evolve and hatch higher level Pokemon as well as power up to higher levels. When you power up your Pokemon when your XP is low, it costs you more candies. As a result, it's best to preserve your Pokemon power-ups until you've attained a higher XP level such as level 20. Number 11. Create an army and keep track of your belongings. There is no need to carry around a growing collection of Pokemon in your bag. The Pokedex is for that. It's preferable to keep only the Pokemon you require. This will provide you an army to fight with in gyms and raid battles. You'll need high-powered Pokemon, but it's preferable to have several powerful Blissey than one powerful Blissey and a Caterpie, Metapod, Kakuna, and so on. Because such Pokemon won't help you much once they have registered and evolved. So understand your Pokemon's ability and assemble an army of strong fighters such as Gengar, Blissey, and Vaporeon. Number 10. Pokemon can be traded for candy. In exchange for candy of that Pokemon variety, you can trade Pokemon to the professor. You can trade out Pokemon you don't need once you have acquired them and obtained the starters and candy they provide. If you already have 20 Rotata, for example, you may probably trade some of them for sweets to strengthen those who will fight for you as Raticate. As previously said, you can only carry a certain amount of Pokemon, and you want all of them to be powerful, so get rid of the weaker ones. Number 9. Check the evolution path. The Pokedex depicts how Pokemon evolve, so it's important to look up what a Pokemon can become before using candy to power it up or evolve it into a lesser version. If you have a lot of Pidgeotto, but only a few Pidgeotto, for example, you'll definitely don't want to waste sugar evolving Pidgeotto into more Pidgeotto. Instead, you should preserve them until you can evolve Pidgeotto into Pidgeot, which requires more candy. More mid-tier Pokemon are less valuable than the rarer evolved forms, which are generally more effective in combat. Check the evolution path as well. Many Pokemon have an evolved form that unlocks as the game progresses. With the inclusions of the Sinnoh area, for example, additional versions became available. To evolve them, you'll need a Sinnoh stone, which means some Pokemon you thought were done can now do something different. So, it's worth checking. Number 8. Make the most of your lucky eggs. You'll occasionally find a lucky egg. For the next 30 minutes, your XP will be doubled. Don't just dump it at random. Instead, strive to make the most of it to help you level up your trainer. That may be when you arrive in a new, bustling locations and know you'll be catching or hatching Pokemon, or when there are numerous gyms to combat and win. So reserve your lucky eggs for those big town center Pokemon Go sessions if you want to receive the most XP. Number 7. Learn how to use the Pokestop. You don't have to tap all of the items released when you visit a Pokestop and spin the sign. Simply close the stop by clicking the X at the bottom, and your prizes will be instantly claimed. Remember that if you are having lunch or coffee near a Pokestop, you can return to it at any time. It only takes a few minutes for it to become available again. Number 6. Go to gyms. Gyms are the true prize as they are the only way to get coins. Gyms are at the heart of Pokemon Go. 
you fight, win and gain control of a gym for your squad. You'll want to leave a powerful Pokemon behind to protect that gym, because the longer they sit and guard it, the more coins you earn. The more coins you earn, the more items you'll be able to purchase. You'll take over the gym for your team, and other team members will join you in defending it. Some Pokemons, such as Bleecy, are difficult to defeat. If you wish to keep it, Bleecy it. But bear in mind that in high turnover gyms, your Pokemon will be knocked out quickly, so utilizing your strongest Pokemon is pointless. Also keep in mind that Pokemon who sits in gyms but don't defend them don't earn as much coins as you may imagine. So that remote gym that no one ever challenges isn't going to earn as much as you think. Number 5. Only fight weight battles you can win. Although it may appear to be a cowardly strategy, putting your 86 CP Squirtle against a 50,000 CP Cure Grey is pointless. If you don't have enough powerful Pokemon or a team of pals to battle with, you'll lose and you'll have to resuscitate and treat your Pokemon with potions. So before you begin the raid battle, make sure you know how powerful the Pokemon are. When fighting gyms, you can progressively wear down your opponents so that you can take on more powerful opponents. You'll still lose, but you'll gain progress. Number 4. Travel, travel wildly travel widely and extravagantly for important locations. For some, this may not be practical, but visiting as many locations as possible may help you collect more types of Pokemon. Your hometown is likely to be dominated by a particular variety, so make an effort to explore various areas to expand your horizons. This could be getting off the bus early and walking or taking a weekend trip to a new location. Perhaps pay a visit to family or distant friends. Then claim that you want to explore all of the local landmarks in order to collect Pokemon and take over gyms, and so on. Special events are becoming more frequently and they introduce some less common or previously unseen Pokemon as well as certain region-specific characters you may not have seen before. Number 3. Play on Battery Saving Mode On all phones, Pokemon Go drains the battery. When the phone is turned upside down, Pokemon Go's power saving mode allows the screen to turn off, saving your battery life by not wasting it on eliminating the screen when you don't need to. To work, you'll need a phone with an accelerometer, which may rule out some low-cost Android phones. Once it's turned on, you can typically place the phone in your pocket upside down, the screen will turn off, but the phone will continue to track your distance and vibrate to alert you to Pokemon. Number 2. Use Adventure Sync Pokemon Go can now sync with your phone's step counter, so you don't have to keep the app open all the time. Turn on the Adventure Sync mode in the setting menu to have the game countdown as you are walking, make it easier to hatch those eggs. Even if you're not playing, all the walking you're doing benefits you. Everyone, embrace battles for more rewards. While the original Pokemon Go was all about catching Pokemon and discovering new ones, battles adds new depth to the game, as well as a slew of new rewards. As you go through the game, you can combat in tiers and receive loads of gifts. Battles, on the other hand, do not require you to go out strolling and exploring. Thus, it's a component of the game you may play from the comfort of your own house. These were some of the best tips and tricks that will make you the master at Pokemon Go. If you know any tips or tricks that helped you in becoming good at the game, then let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel Roblox Portal for more exciting content. Also, don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. See you in the next video!